Let's talk mm -hmm. briefly about ethanol ablation, who that's for, and when you would do that for a patient. Sure. So ethanol ablation I use primarily for cystic nodules or then combination nodules. So um, if a patient has a purely cystic nodule, you know, we can aspirate that nodule, but we know there's a high likelihood that that fluid will recollect. You know, exactly. Cystic nodules. Some patients will present with this acute thyroid cyst that's uncomfortable. You know why that happens, we don't always understand. Draining yeah. it can give them some temporary relief, but we know it's likely to come back. And so those are the patients that are ideal candidates for ethanol ablation. And it works great. You know, it works really well. We do use a combination of ethanol ablation and radiofrequency ablation. And some patients do have mixed nodules. And so typically how I do that is I do the ethanol ablation portion first and then follow up with the radiofrequency ablation, you know, just sequentially on the same day. Um, but I think it's an a great tool. It's so it's very simple and, you know, doesn't require a lot with regards to supplies and things like that. So I think it, it works great. I really like to use it to augment, you know, radio frequency ablation and then for those patients who have just purely a thyroid cyst. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, even though it's been around for much longer than RFA in the United States, it seems to be harder to find physicians who do it these days. We actually have yeah. a number of patients constantly asking, you know, I just want someone who'll aspirate my cyst and do an ethanol ablation because I don't have a solid nodule and I don't need RFA. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad to know that you're doing that. 